being 7 o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bospis. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner Gage. Here. Commissioner Gary. Here. Commissioner Lind. Here. Commissioner Shimmons. Here. Commissioner Twardy. Here. Okay, we're all here. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, thank you very much. Just a couple items uh, before we start. The, um, anyone with cell phones, if they would please put them on uh, vibrate or uh, silence them, we would appreciate it, including the commission. <laughs> also, um, tonight, uh, the night before the general election in the city of Sault Ste. Marie, um, just reminding people that uh, tomorrow is voting day in the in the city. Um, please exercise your right, and it's supposed to be very nice for this time of the year. I think it's high, it's supposed to be around 57 degrees. So um, you should make an attempt to uh, get to the polls. We thank you very much, and we'll mention that again probably before the end of the meeting. Also uh, tonight we have with us a, a guest. Uh, I think it's her first time here. Uh, Elise Matz, uh, UP representative, uh, U.S. Senator uh, Gary Peters, representative uh, out of Marquette in the suit today. And uh, if you'd like to say anything, you, you have some time now if you'd like, or you'd like to wait till the end. It's up to you. Uh, I'd be happy to introduce myself now. Uh, uh, Elise, if you'd like to come to the microphone, then people at home can also hear you. Uh, thank you so much for your hospitality. Since I've arrived here, everybody has just been so wonderfully hospitable. I came uh, in part for a VETS community action team meeting later this week, but it just so happened I was able to sit in on the state senate hearings in support of the new SULAC. Great. Uh, it was very wonderful. We had an opportunity to hear about the great level of state support for that endeavor, which Senator Peters is very, very adamant. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's been here because it was one of the first topics yes. that I was introduced to was his desire for another SULAC and his uh, work on that in the U.S. Senate. So yeah, I will be based out of Marquette. We're in year one of Senator Peters' term, um, and I find out that everything in the Senate takes a little while, but I've been on the ground since September 1st, uh, so I'm happy to make my way over to the Sioux. Um, and yeah, we will have an office established in downtown Marquette, but I do plan to get out here a few times a year, so uh, we'll have a physical location where you can come visit. Um, but certainly, I hope if anyone uh, needs to get a hold of me, I'll be handing out my card before I go. So I'm very, very mobile, and uh, I hope to be accessible by phone or email if you ever need anything. So thank you very much. Thank you, and you're always welcome. Okay, thank you. Item number one is uh, public comment on scheduled agenda items. Any person may reserve time to speak on an agenda item not to exceed uh, three minutes per person. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item? Here, and then we'll move on to the uh, next item. Item number two, the consent agenda. City Clerk, please. Under the consent agenda, a minute approval. One, approval of the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of October 19th. Recommended action, accept the minute, or approve the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of October 19th, 2015. Item two, acceptance of the minutes of the following boards and commissions. A, City Tree Commission, October 20th. B, Planning Commission, October 22nd. Recommended action, accept the minutes of the various boards and commissions. Item B, communications, <laughs> is from the Michigan Liquor Control Commission. Transfer of ownership of a 2015 Class C, an SDM license for Smith Beverages Limited LLC at 108 West Spruce Street, and there is no action required by the commission. C, special orders of business, one, schedule a public hearing on special assessment roll SW-04-15, sidewalk replacement on locations along Easter Day Avenue and on Seymour Street. Recommended action, schedule a public hearing on special assessment roll SW-04-15 for November 16, 2015 regular city commission meeting. Okay, thank you. Is there any commissioner like something further explained on the consent agenda? Uh, commissioner Gage. So move approval of the consent agenda. Support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Baspas. Yes. 
Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 3, Communications A, from the Historical Development Commission, appropriation of Osborne Trust Funds for Bayless Public Library for a microfilm scanner. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Manager Turner. Thank you, Mayor. At the October 13, 2015 Historical Development Commission meeting, the HDC voted to recommend the expenditure of $1,500 in Osborne Trust Funds to be expensed to the Bayless Public Library to assist with the cost of purchasing a new Scan Pro 3000 digital microfilm scanner with the understanding that this equipment must be purchased on or before October 13, 2017. The equipment would be used by the public visitors, genealogists, historians, and library staff for research. It should be noted that the Bayless Library will be raising funds for the balance needed to fulfill the funds needed for this purchase. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission approve an appropriation in the amount of $1,500 of Osborne Trust Funds to the Bayless Public Library toward the purchase of the digital microfilm scanner with the understanding that the allocation expires on October 14, 2017 if the equipment has not been purchased by that time. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bauer. So move that the City Commission approve an appropriation of $1,500 of Osborne Trust Funds to the Bayless Public Library toward the purchase of a digital microfilm scanner with the understanding that the allocation expires on October 14, 2017 if the equipment has not yet been purchased by that date. Support. 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 It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, Commissioner Torney. Well, just a comment. Um, that's the, one of the boards that I sit on. And I, I'm pretty sure that the commission wanted to make sure that the funds would be appropriated just before the purchase. So not at the beginning, but after they raised the rest of the funds. Uh, Commissioner Twardy, that's also my understanding. Okay. And we can assure that administratively. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Boswith? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item B under communications is also from the Historical Development Commission. Appropriation mm -hmm. of Osborne Trust Funds for Chippewa County Geological Society, Riverside Cemetery Ledgers. Okay, thank you. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. At the same meeting held October 13, the HDC voted to recommend the expenditure of up to $255 in Osborne Trust Funds to the Chippewa County Genealogical Society for the purchase of archival boxes for two Riverside Cemetery ledgers and a light kit as well as heavy-duty copy stand to assist in the photographing of the ledger pages. This equipment will be used during the Phase 1 of the Genealogical Society's project to photograph the ledgers with the intention of posting the photos online and will also be used to help preserve the ledgers. While the ledgers are currently housed at the Bayless Public Library and have already been photographed and indexed by the city clerk's office, some of the information such as the names of the parents of the deceased and the cause of death which are contained in the ledgers was not recorded with in the index and it is expected that such information would be of interest to genealogists. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission approve an appropriation of up to $255 in Osborne Trust Funds to the Chippewa County Genealogical Society toward the purchase of archival boxes, a light kit, and a heavy-duty stand to assist in preserving the Riverside Cemetery ledgers and photographing their pages. Thank you, Mayor. Well, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gary. I make the motion to approve the City Manager's recommendation. Support. It's been moved and supported. Are there any questions? Uh, Commissioner Bauer. Yeah, two hundred and fifty-five dollars seems to be somewhat of a random number. How is that? I mean, why isn't it two fifty? You know, just wondering. Where's the extra five dollars coming? Uh, City Manager, you have any? Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Bauer. The actual total expenses it was fifty dollars for the archival storage boxes, forty dollars for the Studio Pro lighting kit, and one hundred and sixty-five dollars for the copy stand. Which totals cost. out to 255. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosbus? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. 
Item C under communications is from the Tree Commission. Recommendation to apply for Tree City USA status for the 2015 calendar year. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. As outlined within the memorandum, at the October 20th Tree Commission meeting, the Tree Commission took formal action to make a recommendation to the City Commission to submit a 2015 application to the Arbor Day Foundation for Tree City USA certification. In order to receive Tree City USA recognition, the City must meet the following four standards which it has met. The first of which is having a tree board, the second of which is having a community tree ordinance, the third is having a community forestry program with an annual budget of at least $2 per capita, and the fourth is participating in or conducting an Arbor Day observance and proclamation. As noted, all of the standards have been met and documented, and the application has been completed online. As a Tree City USA, the City of Sault Ste. Marie will receive signs to be installed recognizing the City of Sault Ste. Marie as a Tree City USA, and the City may also receive continued recognition if it applies for the status annually. Uh, at this time, certainly would like to commend uh, LSSU Professor Dennis Merkel, as well as the entire Tree Commission and the Community Development Department, including Joan Roney, Angie Patterson, and Linda Basista for coordinating and assembling the material needed to make the application. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission approve the submission of an application to the Arbor Day Foundation for 2015 Tree City USA certification. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And uh, tonight we also have the uh, person from Lake Spear State University, Professor Dennis Merkel, is here. Would you like to say anything? No? no, no it's sure. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thanks for coming. Okay. Uh, City Commission, Commissioner Gage. Um, I just wanted to comment that I think that given our, our uh, natural resources and the beauty of our city, given um, our trees all around the community, I think it's incredibly important that we be designated as a Tree City USA. So I'm happy to move the City Commission approve the submission of an application to the Arbor Day Foundation for the 2015 Tree City USA certification. Support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item number four is the city manager's report. Item A, under the city manager's report, would provide for the award of a tentative contract for sidewalk replacements. Uh, city engineer Basista is planning to address the commission on this matter. Thank you. Okay. City engineer Linda Basista. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioner. Good evening. Uh, on October 14th, we received sealed bids for uh, replacing approximately 9,250 square feet of sidewalk on Easter Day in Seymour, which is the uh, item that you previously approved to schedule the roll hearing for for the special assessment. Happy to say that we received four bids, and uh, Darling Concrete was the low bidder at $54,950. Darling Concrete was also the low bidder um, for the sidewalk that was replaced this mm -hmm. spring as well. So uh, it was a very good pricing, good competition, and, and good prices, which is good for the uh, property owners as well as the city. The, uh, and as I said, the project is funded 50% by the special assessments. Uh, so I, being the Darlene uh, Concrete is the a low bidder, responsible and responsive bidder. I recommend a award of the contra contract to Darling in the amount of $54,950. And I would say that, uh, um, that this work will be performed next spring, next summer. Oh, okay, so it's actually, not, it won't be happening until next spring Correct. after the we, snow. In order to do the special assessment process, um, you know, get the bids, then do the special yes. assessment process, um, and also bid at a time when the contractors can actually see the sidewalk and it, that it not be winter time, then we, we're bid, we bid it this early in the, to do construction next summer. Okay, any questions? I guess a question, if the pricing was, I understand it was really a good price, are we looking at any additional sidewalks to yeah, do before then? That um, we, could we will be looking at it adding uh, to the contract if we, if we can. So we'll bring you another uh, special assessment group uh, if the contractor is willing to we'll add to the contract mm -hmm. and bring you another set of sidewalks. Great. Because okay. we do have more budget for this yes. year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Commissioner uh, Lynn. 
Uh, Your Honor, I just want to move the City Commission approve the City Manager and City Engineer's recommendations. Supported. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? <coughs> yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosman? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item B under the city manager's report would provide for the approval of a resolution regarding dark store property valuation methods. As outlined within a memorandum, legislation has recently been introduced in the state of Michigan legislature addressing the dark store method of property valuation whereby large commercial and warehouse stores, also known as big box stores, are valued in a manner that results in the assessments of these properties being comparable to functionally obsolete and vacant properties of a similar size, often with significant deed restrictions and often when these properties are full and active. More specifically, Senate Bill 524 would amend the General Property Tax Act so that the true cash value of a property shall consider the highest and best use of a given property and so that the true cash value of a property shall also consider the property as being either improved or vacant. House Bill 4909, which is the second piece of legislation uh, drafted for this subject matter, would amend the Zoning Enabling Act by preventing negative use restrictions that prohibit the occupancy or use of a property when <laughs> such restrictions go against the lawful use of a given property under a local zoning ordinance. From the perspective of the administration, which has been discussing this legislative priority with elected officials and the Michigan Municipal League to offer relevant local impact information, the legislature should adopt both Senate Bill 524 as well as House Bill 4909 in an effort to effectively address and eliminate the use of the dark store method of property valuation. For the benefit of the commission and the public, both pieces of legislation have been included with the packet. Additionally, a resolution supporting the adoption of both pieces of legislation has been prepared for consideration and potential approval. If approved, the resolution would be sent to a variety of state officials to further emphasize the City of Sault Ste. Marie's policy position on this critical matter. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission approve the presented resolution supporting the passage of Senate Bill 524 and House Bill 4909. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Twarty. I move that the City Commission approve the presented resolution supporting the passage of Senate Bill 524 and House Bill 4909. Support. Support. It's been moved support. Are there any questions? Commissioner Bauer. Yeah. Um, obviously, <laughs> we're all very much uh, in favor of uh, 524 and 4909, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that we already. However, considering that it was fairly lengthy, I was <coughs> wondering if we could get an opinion on, on this from Steve. What are we asking? An opinion I'm on? I'm just the, asking what his opinion is on, you know, on uh, 524 and 4909. Oh, okay. I mean, I know they're good, mm -hmm. but, you know. Well, this is the second set of uh, uh, bills that have been floating around the legislature on this topic. As you know, the uh, stores over 25,000 square feet are considered big box stores and are of limited use because there are only certain retailers that utilize a store footprint that big. As a result, the only comparable sales of stores like that are closed stores, which require several million dollars of renovation, usually adding separate heating systems, separate lighting systems, separate plumbing systems, uh, for the purposes of cutting them up into smaller pieces and reusing the property. So as a result, any buyer of a, uh, of a formal, former big box store is looking at a substantial capital improvement and so they don't sell for very much money uh, in relationship to what they cost to build and no other big box store wants them. You'll never, you, you don't see uh, a Walmart move into uh, an, old, an old Myers, or a Myers move into an old Walmart, or a Target move into an old Walmart usually. There are some exceptions, but as a general rule, they go build a new store across the street. So Walmart closes one store and goes build, and builds another store across the street, just as a pretty much happened in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, so 
the uh, former method of using comparable sales uh, for these types of properties, which is the method used for smaller properties, uh, yields an absurdly low dollar amount per square foot in relationship to the actual cost of the structure when it was built. For example, such a structure may cost $14 million to build, and a resale of it, it may be resold at $2 million or $3 million. So when these big box stores were appealing their taxes, the tax tribunal, using the comparative sale analysis, looked to those sales to value an operating Walmart or an operating Kmart or an operating Myers. This new legislation will allow, uh, or require I should say, the tax tribunal to consider the actual use of the property in determining its value. So from that standpoint, the legislation should uh, eliminate uh, the lottery, so to speak, for the big box stores, come in and build a $14 million store, and next year get a tax, you know, appeal your tax assessment, hope to get it down to $2 million. Should Should eliminate that lottery. It would, and it also, uh, 4909 will also eliminate the negative um, use restrictions, mm -hmm. which you won't get another big box to come in because a lot of the times they won't sell it to a big box because they've had a 25-year restriction on selling it to any other large entity that might be in competition with them. And I think that is part of the, um, that's part of the bill, which is very important. Commissioner Gage. Um, I just wanted to thank um, our Northern Michigan legislators for taking leadership on this. And it's not um, a partisan issue. In fact, we've got a Republican senator and Democratic uh, representative working on this, this issue together. Um, several Republicans and Democrats. And I think that this is crucially important. I've had a number of phone calls and texts and emails about this issue specifically. It's, it's one of the biggest things that constituents talk to me about. And I thank our colleagues on the County Commission for bringing a lot of, of light to this issue. Um, I look forward to working with them more as the process unfolds and perhaps we can um, combine efforts on, on legal services to help continue to fight this. Any other questions or comments? Uh, we have a motion and support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? <coughs> yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Boss? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <coughs> That concludes the city manager's report? It does. Thank okay. you, Mayor. Now we're into status reports. <laughs> item number five. Item A under status report is a master plan update provided by Planning and Zoning Administrator Kelly Freeman. Okay. Evening, Kelly. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, you may remember back in August we had a series of four open house meetings with the public to uh, engage them on several different topics related to land use, transportation, uh, the downtown and the city's relationship with uh, Lake State. Uh, from the information we received, there was a couple of uh, trends that emerged and I thought I would share them with you. Uh, first, there seems to be an interest in reviewing the state of the four block area immediately north of campus. That's the area bound by uh, Peck, Fort, Sheridan, and Meridian. Uh, right now that area is zoned single family, but there's a lot of multi-unit student rentals in there. And uh, some of the people that came to the meeting thought that maybe looking to move that area to a multifamily or parts of that area to multifamily might encourage some investment um, since there are a number of houses in that area that are in relatively poor condition. Um, secondly, uh, there is a lot of support for a walkway on the south side of the Power Canal, uh, kind of between <coughs> Portage and uh, the Sioux Builders area. Uh, there is an old railroad grade that ran through there, so it's, uh, I wouldn't say an easy setup, but uh, certainly less complicated than the north side. Uh, we've had some discussions with Cloverland and they seem interested in the concept, so uh, things are moving along, although their discussions are fairly preliminary at this point. Um, as it related to the downtown, a lot of the comments focused on the appearance of buildings and their general condition, uh, as well as business uh, development and the need to continue to uh, support investment in the downtown. Uh, one of the exercises that we had uh, people go through uh, as it relates to the downtown is we had a series
of, I think, 12 or 13 uh, pictures of different buildings, uh, you know, different building styles. Your traditional downtown, something that's got metal siding on it, uh, vinyl siding, and just asked generally people's feelings of the appropriateness of these things, uh, types of styles on the downtown, and uh, far and away the traditional style that people generally associate it with downtown. Uh, your brick building, two story, was the most preferred uh, with things like uh, a pole barn or things with pitched roofs being lower down the list. Uh, so definitely from what I saw there, we definitely be looking at uh, moving toward a farm based code in the downtown when we're ready to, to get to that point. Uh, as far as the timing, the um, consultant is currently working on the first half of the master plan draft. That's the, the numerical and statistical information. Uh, once that's finished, that'll go to the master plan uh, subcommittee of the planning commission. They'll review it, uh, get that back to the consultant, and then we'll start into the uh, recommendations and the kind of the nitty gritty part of the, uh, of the master plan. Uh, they'll review that second half again, and once the planning commission is uh, satisfied with it, uh, it'll go out, I believe, for a 63 day review and comment period uh, before coming back to the city commission for final adoption. So that's where we're at. And I would be uh, remiss in uh, not recognizing Commissioner Shimmons and her contribution as the city commission liaison to the planning commission. So thank you very much for, for acting in that role. Any questions of uh, Kelly? I understand uh, Maloney's Alley is still generating an awful lot of uh, interest, public it is. interest. It is. We're actually meeting with some uh, potential developers on Wednesday. So, mm -hmm. well, we all know we need capital in the community, yes, and we anytime we can hopefully entice some of those uh, uh, folks with some capital that would want to come to the community or are in the community and want to share some of the wealth, we're more than happy to accommodate them. Commissioner uh, Gary. <laughs> that report was uh, informative and concise. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. City Manager. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Mm -hmm. Item B under status report pertains to the general city election and organizational meeting. As a reminder, Tuesday, November 3rd, tomorrow, is election day in the city of Sault Ste. Marie. Electors will be asked to select a mayor for a two-year term and three city commissioners for a four-year term. City polling locations will be opened from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Precinct 1, the location for Precinct 1 is Presbyterian Church at 555 Bingham Avenue. The location for Precinct 2 is Lincoln Elementary School at 810 East 5th Street. And the location for Precinct 3 is Washington Elementary School at 1200 Ryan Street. Any Michigan voter can view the upcoming election calendar, view a sample ballot, get voting district information, or find a polling location information by visiting www.michigan.gov slash vote. On a closely related matter, the city organizational meeting is scheduled to take place next Monday, November 9th in the city commission chambers at 4 p.m. At this meeting, the existing commission will be seated and will be asked to approve the minutes of the November 2nd meeting. Following the adjournment of this meeting, the newly elected mayor and commission will be sworn in. A mayor pro tem will be elected by the commissioners. The meeting schedule will be set for the next two years and various appointments of commissioners will be made to the various boards and committees of the city. The protocols util utilized by the City Commission on these various matters have been enclosed within a packet for review by the City Commission and the public. On behalf of City Administration, I offer best wishes to all those candidates running for Mayor and City Commission. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, thank you. Any questions? Okay. C commissioner Lynn. I have a prediction. Jay Gage is going to win this election. <laughs> He's very astute. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Um, again, um, before we go on to item number six, there is voting day again in the city of Sault Ste. Marie tomorrow. So, we, again, we exercise, uh, please exercise your right to vote. Item number six, matters presented by the public. Is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, we'll vote to item number seven, matters presented by the City Commission. City Commission. Commissioner Gage. Um, as commissioners know, uh, I forwarded a letter I received from a resident um, that wished to discuss uh, road construction. I hope you all had the chance to read that letter. And it was particularly about um, the asphalt being laid on certain portions of the CSO project that had been worked on. 
Um, so I'm wondering if uh, the city manager would be able to talk about that and possibly get a report from the city engineer. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Commissioner Gage. If the city engineer could please address the matter as presented by Commissioner Gage would be very much appreciated. Okay. Good evening again. Mm -hmm. My understanding that the uh, particular resident had a concern regarding the fact that we do not add the last, uh, the what's called the wearing course of asphalt during our CSO projects at, in the first year that it, their streets are constructed. This has been a long-standing practice during the CSO projects to put down just the first base cor course of asphalt uh, in the year that it's originally constructed and then place the final wearing course in the uh, following spring summer. Uh, the advantage of that is to, so that if there are any defects in the work or if, there, uh, if a lead was missed or there's settlement that occurs, we have the opportunity to fix that before putting down the wearing course so we're not putting patches in the, in the final wearing course. So any, any issues uh, identified through, over the winter can be addressed and then the following summer we have a nice complete wearing course uh, on the road uh, we we have the I would say we have the opportunity to do this as part of the CSO project because it's a large two three year project other projects we don't typically require that um, the wearing course be placed the following year because they're much smaller contracts we don't want to hold the contracts open for another year another winter and they're usually not as complex as this project, as the CSO project is, with all the services, all the leads, all, you know, the water and the sewer. Um, there's just a lot going on in these tight residential areas with opportunities for something to be missed. Uh, sometimes you have a lead that goes uh, down, another, down to another block that maybe uh, had gotten missed as much as, you know, we take effort, every effort to get everything taken care of. Uh, other projects, we don't do it on other projects, again, simply because we don't spend, you know, we don't keep the contracts open that long. And we don't feel that it's a, um, a problem for the curbs. Uh, as, as I said, we've done it for many years. And just as an example, if you go and see the last round of projects, see the, from the C1 project, uh, right around the corner within this area, now, uh, we've had no problems with the damage of, from the curbs of being plowed. Because just a couple things, too. This is the um, 20, we started in 1994, I believe, and that has been the policy. Um, there is nothing worse than putting blacktop, your final course of blacktop, and it happened. And it, I mean, it doesn't happen often, and we don't want it to happen ever, but it does happen that something gets missed. And it, I think it was the first CSO, on, and, and I believe it was uh, down on the east side of uh, uh, Spruce Street. We had to cut the street out after it was totally done. And the patch is there, and it's holding up, but it's never the same. Um, and it's just a, with our soils in this community, and the reason why it's so expensive because of the soils in the community and the clay, things tend to move. And now the frost uh, last two years has been down over seven feet, um, which means you know things things can occur. So that. The policy is there. The policy seems to have worked. Uh, I don't know of a particular, I know it's a trip hazard. Uh, it can be, but I, how is plowing? Um, our road graders and the, the plow drivers know that the, the, the curbing is there. The, you know, and, it, and, and curbs, get, curbs do get uh, hit. I mean, they're, um, I, you can go back over the CSO work and that can be replaced and it can be repaired. And there has been some some curbs that have gotten you know damaged a bit, but there's nothing worse than cutting having to cutting a road and and come across with a, with a, some additional blacktop because something was missed. So that's the policy. I, I don't see personally that that we would want to change that at this point, uh, Commissioner G uh, Gary. Uh, Linda, some of the people that I've spoken to are just worried that they'll be disrupted again. So could you go over uh, the process next year, which is very quick to put that wear course yes. on? Yeah, the, the final wearing course just requires that they uh, go in and they have to raise the manhole covers that are, that are in the street. That takes a day or two. And then they come in and it's, it's less than a day to do that final paving uh, 
once once and all the other work is typically done. traffic is not really disrupted they just go right through not really people are not day. usually not uh disrupted you know um replaced from their driveways it, if the timing is just right they usually get out of their driveway but it's usually only for a few hours that they're disrupted commissioner gage uh my final two questions um are just in regards to if you could speak to how this differs from Ashman Street, which was finished, um, and then if curbs are chipped and, and fractured, do we assess the property owner for replacement of those the following year if they are damaged by a plow? Those are just my final two questions. No, there's no assessment on, on repairing any damage to uh, curb. No, the assessment uh, property owners are, are paying is, is for the street reconstruction, but once once it's done, it's ours. and. Our plow drivers are very good, um, as Mayor said. They know that these are these streets are areas where there's uh, um, where the final wearing course has not been placed, and so they take uh, extra caution. And that is an area where the graders are used, so it's a little different process, and it's it's easier on the curb edges as well. And then Ashman. Oh, in Ashman, well. Uh, like I said, it, it is a matter of our CSO projects are multi-year projects and we don't want to keep the contract open on a, a project that is a, a couple of month project such as Ashman. But Ashman is, a, uh, was an M, is an MDOT road and that was MDOT's project and, and it, that would have been up to them to make that decision to uh, put the final wearing course on, uh, postpone or, or do it now. and. And I think for all intents and purposes, they do it and get it done, yep. and close the contract. Thanks. Any other questions? Commissioner Torney? Not relating to um, the letter, but can you tell me when the, the intersection on Spruce and Bingham might be finished? <laughs> <laughs> They're paving tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So. I'm tired of the They'll start probably going to start around noon time, but the weather was nice and warm today. We uh, checked grade today, and um, even though we had a lot of rain, I was concerned about you know the base being wet. But went out and checked it, and things are looking good. And tomorrow's temperature is looking good, so paving tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. Fantastic. As long as we're, as long as you're there, and we're talking about mm -hmm. projects. How about East uh, um, Portage? East Portage will not, we decided not to do East Portage this year in order to get Ridge done. We didn't want to close East, um, West Portage. You're talking about no. West Portage? I'm no, sorry. No, I'm talking about East Portage down by. Um, oh, those, um, those. Those cut across on the uh, the roadways. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Riverside near the, Drive. N n yeah, near the, well, Woody's uh, One Stop. Yes, those because will get paid time this it, year. Yeah, every time it yeah. rains, it's, Soon. A, it's um, a mess. I don't know when the, I, I, I believe that project, that's part of the Urgent Needs Water Main project, they were planning on having some paving done tomorrow. Okay. So that's a different paving contractor. Payne and Dolan sure. is doing the uh, paving for the uh, Water Main project. They were ready with grow cap and those cuts. So. Okay. Uh, I think tomorrow, but absolutely any day now, it, it, those will be Because there's an awful paved. lot of traffic on yeah. that roadway, and it's, know. you know, the, the holes <laughs> I in I go the, over that. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, you go right <laughs> Yeah, and there's there's a lot of calls uh, yeah. because people With all just, the rain, it's Especially just, at nighttime in the dark, they just yeah. don't see them, and they're, I mean, there's some huge holes. And then they grade, grade them, and then we get rain, and they and get washed they out again. So again. Okay, yeah. but the rest of the roadway is in really nice shape. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Gage? Sorry to keep bringing stuff up, but um, I just wanted to give a specific shout out. Uh, thank you uh, to Senator Wayne Schmidt, who brought up um, several senators to discuss uh, the importance of the Sioux Locks today. We had the Senate Transportation, Senate Commerce, and Senate Economic Development Committees meet in a joint session today at Lake State. Um, there was, I think, eight or nine senators that came and toured the locks. Um, and then held a, a special committee hearing to discuss the importance uh, and vitality of the new Superlock project. Um, they ended up passing unanimously a resolution uh, to compel our federal legislators um, to <clears throat> find the money appropriated and um, put it in a lockbox. Um, so I understand that, that in this community it's tough. We've heard this story a lot of times where, oh, we finally are, are doing something, we're finally holding a meeting, we're gonna discuss the Superlock again, we're gonna find the money. 
Um, I personally am excited for the day the check's going to come. I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath necessarily, but um, I just wanted to thank those people specifically for coming up um, and touring Sault Ste. Marie and touring the locks and bringing attention to it yet again. I got to say something because it's <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and and it's and it's great that we're continuing that that, that push because we really you want to talk about getting excited. We got excited when they broke the ground and we all were down at the uh, visitor center and they broke the ground. They buried the stuff and we were, and we had the shovels in the ground. They built the coffer dams. They spilt. They spent probably thirty-five million dollars on mm -hmm. uh, coffer dams, engineering, and now the it sits there. So getting the um, the lock to get one of the top five priorities for the U.S. core is, is important. And if we can move that along, then maybe it will be funded in, a, in our lifetime. But every, every election year, it tends oh, yeah. to, you know, this is an off election year, but every election year tends to be something that gets on the radar. Yep. And as I know, it's the first time that we've had these kind of hearings in the city of Sault Ste. Marie. And we certainly appreciate uh, Senator, uh, our State Senator uh, Schmidt bringing those up here and getting a chance to testify and getting the, the state on board with trying to put pressure on neighboring states and the federal government to fund the, the suit, the locks, you know, the locks well, of the suit. So. And one of the things that was highlighted today, um, and I really wasn't super aware of this until actually today, honestly, um, was was the study that was commissioned back in 2009, 2010 that, that discussed this lock and this project specifically um, is a flawed study in that yes. they, they said that there could be, um, if there was a, a damage or, or something happening at the pole lock and shut it down, that they could take care of the traffic load over rail and over road. No. And it's absolutely not possible. Absolutely not possible. Yeah. And it was refreshing to me to hear um, specifically Senator Casperson um, mm -hmm. speak at length about the fact that we don't need another study. We've been studied mm -hmm. to death. We've had how many different studies again and again and again and again. Let's just build the darn lock. So mm -hmm. um, it was refreshing to hear that from somebody in a position of authority. And, and I'm encouraged about the progress that was made today. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Lynn. This has been going on for how many decades? <laughs> Lots. How, how many studies? I'll make a prediction. I hope I'm wrong. It won't be built in my lifetime, okay, due to the fact that I'm old. <laughs> We're hoping you're wrong. I hope yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> but, Commissioner but, Lynn, weren't you, weren't you wrong when they built the first lock, though? I was sure, <laughs> I was sure when Harvey built the first lock, yes, I was. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Support. 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 All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Post same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.